Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Toffel and today we are doing our first episode of Faculty Talks. Today we have Dr. Norman Lepla as our guest. So Dr. Lepla, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well first, thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate uh, talking about the DPM program. Uh, I'm a professor of entomology in the Department of Entomology and Nematology at the University of Florida, IFAS. Um, also founding director of the Integrated Pest Management Program, IPM Florida, which has been around for about 20 years. I have an appointment that's formal, 50% research, 50% extension, and uh, don't have a teaching appointment, but I enjoy mentoring students. Most of my work, uh, research, is in uh, integrated pest management, cultural practices, biological control, and also I work on in, uh, rearing natural enemies. Quite often, that's an area I like to work in. Interesting. So can you tell us a little bit more about those past experiences and why you chose this profession? Well, I graduated from the University of Arizona in 1972, way back when, and came to Florida, worked with the Agriculture Research Service, uh, my first real job, and uh, moved to Texas to build a laboratory for them, and then transitioned to the USDA, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service in Washington, D.C., where I managed national programs and some international programs in pest management. So then I returned to Florida in an administrative role. I was director of what's now the Mid-Florida Research and Education Center when we built a new consolidated center at Apopka. And then I got the opportunity to come to campus to the department and to uh, start the IPM program. That's pretty much what I did. Uh, entomology chose me. People often ask, how did I get into entomology? Well, I was studying zoology, uh, animal behavior. Uh, ecology was a new, uh, really expanding field. I was just enthralled with that when somebody came along and offered me a fellowship in the entomology department at the University of Arizona. And I kind of weighed the, the options. You know, here I am poor and struggling, and there I would be with a fellowship and spend full time studying. So I grabbed that fellowship to study the, uh, uh, really the ecology and, and pest management for pink bollworm, which was a major problem, particularly in the Southwest United States. So entomology found me and I'm glad it did. It's been a wonderful career, fascinating things to do and it's still going on. Absolutely, I think entomology has found a lot of us. So now onto the DPM program, what have your uh, contributions been to it? Well, I go back to the beginning. Uh, the DPM program started about the same time as the IPM program, so it was fortuitous that I got together with uh, Dr. George Agrios. I had five faculty departments represented at my center, so I had worked with him when I was center director. So we came together and, and did a lot of things. Of course, he was the leader. And Dr. John Caponera, a lot of people don't know, was the co-leader. He's kind of a... a unassuming fellow, but he had a lot to do at the beginning of the plant medicine program. So I worked with the two of them and considered the plant medicine program kind of the third land grant part. Uh, since we didn't have education in IPM in the program, we had extension and research. Uh, well, let's partner and make this the other part. And it's worked out very well. Uh, this, this went on for a while, several years, because we struggled. Uh, the students now, I tell them stories about the struggle. We didn't have enough classes. We had to actually add classes. We didn't have enough faculty members. We had to add and uh, encourage faculty members to work with us in the, in the plant medicine program. They didn't know what it was. It was non-traditional. Uh, funding was a horrible problem. We worked so hard on grants and trying to get enough funds for our students. Uh, the students helped and worked hard. Uh, every, even facilities. I mean, we just didn't have much to work with uh, compared to today. So it takes a while, and that's what I did, was to put my shoulder to the wheel along with the other leaders. Uh, we've had four, four directors of the plant medicine program, and of course, uh, our premier director is now Dr. Amanda Hodges, who's uh, superb. Uh, along those years, I, I chaired, co-chaired, or served on 15 or 20 uh, graduate committees for the plant medicine program. I've lost track of all of them. In fact, I hate to admit it, I've probably lost track of 
two or three of the graduates. And I'm very proud of them. And I'm pleased that I was able to uh, work with those students, those fine people. Um, I also have kind of a role of, of informal mentor. I'm always available for the plant medicine students. And so quite a few of them that weren't my students also, I've had a, an opportunity to work with and I appreciate that. So that's what pretty much what I've done. It's taken 20 years. Well, it's very useful and very impressive. Uh, so currently, are there any courses you're involved with uh, that are needed for the DPM exam? I used to do quite a few uh, uh, lectures, guest lectures. I don't do too much of that anymore. Uh, it's mentoring. Uh, and I work kind of a niche with the students in designing their research projects and helping them to write up their, their uh, usually it's a thesis or a dissertation, and then, then their publications. So that's an area where I have a lot of experience and I help out, but it's not formal teaching. I tried a couple of times to teach seminars and I must say I'm a little bit rusty at the, at the uh, we'll call it a classroom setting. But anyway, um, students always help if you fumble around and, and we did learn a lot about how to publish and how to define um, uh, research uh, purpose and objectives clearly uh, where to publish, things like um, uh, really a hard part for the students is to do an outline. So working hard on, on how to get to the point where an outline is a natural way to design the work and, and to write it up. So those are the kinds of things that I've done with the students more than anything else. And then, of course, uh, they work in my lab. They work with me in the field. Um, let's see, what else? Well, they're always welcome to come along. So uh, nowadays, are there any opportunities to work with you? And if oh, so, sure. what kind of research? Well, there are always opportunities. I, I'm happy to help out with research that uh, isn't my own. Uh, I learn. Uh, it's, uh, DPM students get involved in a lot of different things, a broad range, since it's a, a, a program that's designed for entomology, plant pathology, and plant sciences. It's really unique. There's nothing else like it. And so the students come in with just things I've never even thought about. And uh, so I learned from them. They also learned from me. It's back to IPM projects and how, how to do research. Uh, you know, just things that come natural to me are new to the students. They don't would be at the university if they already knew how to do these things. So we, we talk a lot about the scope of research, um, what the feasibility is, what the, what the outcomes might be, whether it's worth doing, whether they want to do it, whether it's inter interesting to them. So those kinds of talks are what I mean by mentoring. I consider any student that spends time with me my student. And so uh, it can get kind of <laughs> humorous once in a while because uh, we may not have a formal relationship, but I'm really proud of the recent graduates. Uh, I've got a little short list. Uh, Tatiana Sanchez, who's very active now in Extension. Lynette Sobel, uh, Morgan Pinkerton, she's now an Extension agent. Uh, Sage Thompson, who's with my old outfit in Washington, D.C. I'm really proud of her. Arjan's over at LSU, Arjan Kanaka. Corey Penka is now with USDA in uh, South Florida. It's a lab that I actually helped uh, build, start. Um, Alex Gannon just graduated recently, and now I have two students. And you know, it's hard to separate my students from DPM, but I've got Cleveland Ivy and uh, Kendall Stacy, both not not DPM students, but very closely allied with them. So it's that's just recently. So I guess I spend my life with DPM and don't even think about it. And to finish off, do you have any ad additional information about the program or any advice to new students? You know, follow your heart. The program is special. And so when you graduate, uh, you will be special. Uh, you have high demand. All of our graduates in are in high demand. They all find niches, do very well professionally. Some are stellar. Some are in there doing their best and doing a great job. It just depends on how, they, how things work out. Um, but the idea is the plant medicine students are gifted in working with people. 
that's the niche. Um, you know, it really isn't directly a research or extension or teaching niche. It's any, any place where technical information, scientific information needs to get to people to make decisions at all levels in all parts of our society and in fact globally. That's the promise and the payoff. And when the students do well, uh, they graduate and go on uh, to really find careers. I guess I would call it the design, although it's evolved, uh, program that uh, Dr. Hodges is, is leading so masterfully right now uh, involves kind of connecting, connecting the students with the real world. A lot of times the, the academic world is a little bit separate. And, and she brings the, the real life experiences through the internships, which are substantial now, didn't used to be, and connections with, with industry, government, uh, at all levels and other, other institutions. So that's the sort of thing that is so beautiful about, about the plant medicine program and should be um, appreciated by all of us. The main thing is, I just hope the students take every opportunity to grow and develop and work with the faculty, including me. Well, thank you very much for zooming in today and sharing all of that information. My pleasure. And thank you to our viewers for watching another episode. So stay tuned for more.